one of the things we talked about, um, and full disclosure, you, I was asking you like, Hey, what are you interested in? What do you like talking about? And you said, um, the idea of, you know, being professionally irreverent. And I was like, I don't know what that means. And so just like my teach my seven year old daughter, Clea, I was like, what does irreverent mean? So I, I just did, I actually thought you were gonna say professionally irrelevant. I was like, I know what irrelevant means. And so I like Googled it and I was like, well, irreverent kind of means disrespectful. Like can be a little bit disrespectful. And you're like, no, it's professional. There's a difference here when I talk about professionally. So I, first of all, I, I think it, one of the things that's really important, I, I think when we say buzzwords in education, I, I believe words become buzzwords when we say them without actually like articulating what they clearly mean. Right. And sometimes people just say words over and over and over again, because they think it's the word they should be saying. But then if you say to them, what does that even mean? And then you, and they can't tell you that's when it becomes a buzzword. So I, so I just asked you and I loved what you shared. So talk a little bit about what it means to be professionally irreverent and, and why it's so important. I actually, in full disclosure, I asked Sarah, I loved it so much. I'm going to ask her some questions and hopefully I get to post on my blog, uh, sooner than later, because I just think it's what you shared is so connected to, uh, innovation. And I will say this, I'm like, I do that. I do what you said, but I've never actually had the term for it. And it really made a lot of sense to me. Cause so if you can just share professionally irreverent, sure. why that really matters. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it, what it, I'll, let me start by saying what it isn't right. So it's not about saying anything you want. It's not mm. about being disagreeable. It's not about pushing back for the sake of pushing or being critical. So being professionally irreverent is being deliberate about not just going along to go along. Mm. And to so there's sort of three things that to me characterize being professionally irreverent. One is asking a lot of questions, right? Because I have I'm the kind of person it needs to make sense for me to sort of get on board. And so it's being comfortable to ask questions about why certain choices are being made or why certain decisions and have we thought about this and have we thought about that? And so creating a, a space where we can question decisions, approaches, all of those things to me is, not, is, is number one. And, and I think if you're in a room where people aren't asking questions, that to me is worrisome. So I, I really think you have to be in a space where you um, push into this space of asking questions. The second thing I would say is it's a posture of always trying to make things better. So I, it's a, sort of almost a compulsion of mine that I, I can't ever leave something alone. If I touch it, I have to try to improve it. Right. And, and so to me, being a professionally irreverent is pausing to say, does this still work? Pausing to say, is this approach, does this serve our goal? I love one of the people who work with me know I'm always saying is what is the problem we are trying to solve? Yeah. Is this the approach that does it? So the second thing is really also trying to improve. And, and the third thing I think about being irreverent is figuring out what the people in positions of authority and whatever you th that means for you, whether it's supervisory authority or uh, hierarchy or whatever it is, like figuring out what motivates them and approaching issues from their interest base, right? So if you're someone who says, oh, I, I can't do all these things with my boss or my organization doesn't have a tolerance for this, I'd say, well, what is it that they're after? Because if they're motivated by excellence, they're motivated by innovation, if they're motivated by accolades, then you have to figure out a way to sort of be irreverent in a professional way right. to show them how doing something maybe just a little bit differently or asking these questions um, might get at what they're really after ultimately overall. So, I mean, I could talk about this, go on and on, but I, I think it's um, making sure you're in a, you are in a space where you are have a positive supposition about the other person, that you are not a, against the work but you are against the idea of just going along without sort of autopsying something and really looking closely at whether or not it works and makes sense. You know, so I, like as I'm, I'm listening to you explain this and here, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to like snip this out. This is going to be like a little clip on YouTube. Um, the, the three things I absolutely love and I'm like listening and how do I do this too? Like, how do I do this? And so I come into an organization and immediately because they're bringing me in they're like oh this guy's the expert blah 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 which i don't think this at all i actually say like i'm just someone here sharing ideas 
and I'm talking to the experts right now. And so your role is to, is to kind of figure out how what I'm saying makes sense to you and how it applies to your context. And you figure this out. I'm not telling you how to teach. I'm not telling you how to do your job because that's not my role. But at the end of my talk, and I usually have this space where I really get uh, personalized learning is I share, I'm like, okay, here's what I need from you. What are your questions? What are your ideas? And what are your challenges? So here's what I'm asking you. Do not challenge me at the end of the day in the parking lot with your friends when I'm not there. Do that in the room. Challenge me here. So mm. because I don't know if I'm right. And I don't know, maybe I said something wrong. Maybe I wasn't clear enough. But challenge me in this space. And people are like a little thrown off that I'm like actually outright asking for it. But it's the same thing is that I, I want to get better. Like I want to get better. And I want to make sure and a lot of those conversations I've had in those have changed things I've done in the future. Um, and I think people appreciate that because I am open to that as well. But there's another reason I do that too, is I'm trying to model to the administrators because I know you and I, I know we never talked about this, but I'm going to bet you'd agree with me. Not all administrators are leaders and you know, like administrators are role. leader is something that is like you, you, you earn that right and i'm trying to model to those to those administrators how important it is to create a space where you can be challenged even though you are deemed as knowing stuff i guess i don't want to say it being an expert but whatever and so how how is there ways that you maybe like one or two ways that mm -hmm. you can create a space where administrators be because I, I i guarantee you someone's listening to this and they're saying, that's awesome, but my admin's not gonna be like this. So for the administrators who are listening to this, what do you do to help them create that space where that is? Because the thing I do, I do know about administrators, they want their school to be better. They wanna be better. But are they open to that? If you're not, you're not gonna get better. 